Hi there. All right, so I have been playing around, I and some friends have been playing around with this uh, Wii here for a little bit, and they actually, it's a pretty neat, nice little system. It's a little bit smaller than the Xbox 360 there. Uh, it doesn't have nearly as nice a hardware. It, it uses, it's, it's basically a, an improved GameCube. They did, they made some smart decisions. They upped the processor by a little bit. They beefed up the graphics hardware. And mainly they just added some new devices like the, the Bluetooth controller, uh, internal Wi-Fi that allows, you know, you have the neat controller and some other stuff. So they, they did some things and they came up with some nice ideas for ways to make better games. And, you know, I think it's to their credit that it's still very hard to buy a new one of these. You know, they're very hard to find in the store. So they seem to have done well enough even with a st stripped down minimal hardware approach. So one of the challenges they had in making the system work is that they wanted to preserve full backward compatibility with GameCube games, which on a superficial level is easy because it uses the same processor just a little bit faster, but also there were a number of other issues with, you know, if we have this extra hardware, we'll confuse it. So their solution to this was they, uh, sorry, step back a little bit. The processor used in both the GameCube and in the Wii is a modified or it's almost off the shelf IBM PowerPC processor. Uh, the one in the Wii is called the Broadway. And there has a, next to it, it has a, uh, an ATI developer graphics chip, which they call the Hollywood. And that, it turns out, actually is a very interesting chip because it has what Nintendo uh, refers to as an IO processor bridge in it. But it's actually a full-fledged full embedded ARM code, ARM core that we've uh, nicknamed the Starlet as part of Hollywood, you know. So uh, that actually it does uh, a lot of the authentication and all the checks and all the gatekeeping. And so this device is the gatekeeper through which all of the neat stuff like USB, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi is done. And so what happens is this chip checks uh, and it sits in between the DVD D drive and the rest of the system. And in, when it detects that you're trying to boot a GameCube game, it more or less shuts itself off. It shuts out off all the interesting hardware. It restricts the area of memory that you're allowed to access. And so you can run your old GameCube games, which aren't encrypted and don't have much protection, um, and it works out fine. You can run GameCube Linux on it, but you don't get any of the neat new Wii features. You've got a GameCube. So uh, one of the things that they didn't do is they don't have this whole encrypted memory scheme. And so uh, what we were able to do is do a, a, what we call a tweezer attack, where one of the restrictions they put in to keep something like this from happening is uh, this chip is a gatekeeper between the processor and the memory, and it only lets the processor see you know, like the lower one-eighth uh, page of the memory because that's all that the game you had. But we have more memory, and in that memory there are fun things like encryption decryption keys. But you can't see them because you can't get to that memory. Well, if you manage to put the tie to the address lines together for a brief moment and then have it try to read the memory, it turns out you can actually read all of the memory with a, you know, a few little maneuvers. So, we were able to do that and then hook up a serial line to one of the controller ports and dump a bunch of data out and parse through it or whatever. And so with that, we were able to uh, recover some encryption keys. And so then I think I have something I can show, hopefully. So this is something, this is uh, hot off the presses. This first worked about an hour ago. So hopefully it'll still work. Mm. Thank you. Uh, this is harder than it looks, right? <laughs> this is not really Lego Star Wars, but uh, right now we're still basically patching other codes we found. Uh, someday we'll have a nice, you know, Linux bootable DVD, but until that point, all I can show is that we do have code running. It is running in Wii mode, not GameCube mode, because we do actually have access to uh, all the hardware. So, this is something that certainly was not all me, but I'm the only one here to actually present about it. Um, we hope to have a release sometime soon, but not yet. It's still very, very rough. Like I said, I don't even, even have any slides, so we didn't think it was going to work. But it did work the last minute, so we thought we'd uh, stand up and show you. This is what happens if you don't have encrypted memory. Yeah, thank you guys for watching us. And yeah, that's it. Are there any questions? Oh, but I think we're quite late, so maybe 
If somebody wants to talk with us, we are downstairs in the hack center. I think you can't miss the Xboxes. So just go there and ask us. I think it's better than asking it here. I'm sorry that we are over our schedule again. So we will now go away here to make place for the next presenters. <laughs>